In this video, I'm going to create a fairly simple dynamic block. Um, we're just going to make a beam with uh, stretch functions, and we'll add an attribute to it as well. Um, you'll pick up a few other useful tips along the way. So overall, it's going to be a fairly useful tutorial. The main reason I'm making this tutorial, however, is to try to assess how popular making an entire tutorial series on dynamic blocks would actually be. So after watching this, if you want to see more, if you think it's worth doing, um, leave a comment below, and if I get enough um, feedback, I might go ahead and actually do that. But anyways, let's get to making the actual block. So we're going to go into the block editor shortly, but I just want to show you an important concept. That's the stretch command. Not the delete command, but the uh, stretch command. So you can see how it works. Any node that I pick up, even without the object highlighted, is what the stretch command affects. And this concept will um, be important for when we actually make our action. This applies to the stretch action and some of the other actions, but not all of them. So I have a section of the beam right here. I'm going to stretch it. Notice how this hatch followed the stretch action, but this one didn't. I'm going to move it out. I'm going to just do a hatch, select, do a match properties. So all I did here is make a hatch that has an associated boundary. This one did not. So I'll just do the match prop. And now this should follow. the line work. So that's an important concept for the block we're about to create. So one thing I'm doing here, um, this will make sense later, I'm making boundaries. The block will work as long as there, are there is a boundary, it doesn't have to be attached. But th this just gives me, an, uh, I guess, an excuse to show you something that can come in handy when you're building more, um, I guess, more complicated dynamic blocks. Okay, so what we're going to do here is hatch and type S for select. Just going to do that three times. Match properties, I already have my hatches right here, so I'm just going to do that, that, and that. you're wondering, this is just a gradient hatch. Okay, so you see why I have these um, extra rectangles in just a second here. So I'm going to select all this, type block, I'm going to go into the block editor, name, not annotative, let's go OK. Sorry, I created a block. Now we're going to go into the block editor. So with these rectangles, I'm going to use a command called B construction. That just turns those rectangles into line work that you cannot see. I'm going to do draw back. And now when I stretch this to here, All that will be in line. So I have those rectangles underneath here that you won't see. Then I have this um, line work. And that can be important because sometimes your block, you, it might be something other than a beam, right? And you might want it open. You might not want the hatch attached to this line work. But if this line work stayed put, those hatches would probably stay with the line work as long as the, um, um, I guess let's say the seal isn't broken. If, uh, best way I can put it this morning. Let's say you put your um, base point in the wrong place. Just go to parameters, base point, put it right there. That'll come in handy later as well when we put our stretch action in. So your basic, um, I guess, process for creating a stretch action is you'll pick your action parameter. Now I should say right now that um, these constraints up here uh, I don't usually use them, and they are only available in AutoCAD Full, which I have right now, of course, but um, I don't really use them. So this dynamic block tutorial is going to be restricted to 
these parameters, not these constraints. So these are usually re referred to as constraint parameters, and these are, let's call them action parameters for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, I do seldomly use these, but if you can get away with using these parameters, there are just so many advantages, it's more stable, um, easier to work with, um, but yeah, it's a, if you're really slick with these, you can also create the same behavior as you otherwise could with these. These constraints do have their place and are very useful in certain situations, but for me, I've been able to eliminate them 99.8% of the time. So I just created this parameter, and now I have this little warning thing. We can just ignore that. It doesn't really mean much. And now we go to our actions. Stretch. We can select this. It's going to ask for which node you want to do. We're going to do both anyways, but I'll go there. And now I'll create the stretch action. And now I can just select the objects. I can select everything. Note that if you have hatches and they are bound, you don't actually have to select the hatch. And sometimes it's better not to. The only time I've been able to pull the hatch out of position and break that boundary is if the hatch's origin point is within that stretch actions. Within that stretch actions boundary. So that would probably break our hatch. I'm going to close the block editor, save the changes. In this case, it didn't break the boundary, which is pretty cool. But just be aware that it might. Let's go back into the block editor. Click OK. I'm going to delete this. So just so to go over that one more time, you select your parameter, you place your parameter. It could be the point move. It could be one of these other ones. And then you take, um, then you go to the actions tab, and then you select your action. Select this, 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 objects. So I'm going to delete that because you're probably wondering what these are. These are just a shortcut to what I de just demonstrated. So there's this um, linear stretch pair, there's linear stretch that's just one. So basically when you put the parameter in, it comes with the action already there. So I'll do the linear stretch pair. I can actually rename this. I'm going to keep this one, so I'm going to go through the trouble of renaming it. There's other properties down here, like the base location, start point. I won't get into that in this lesson. Those can be, if you experiment with them, you'll find out pretty quickly what they do, hopefully. Anyways, enough talking. You can see that the nodes are already picked out for us. So I'm just going to right click, new selection set. Made a mistake there. Let's um, action selection set, new selection set. I need to fix that. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see that where that little um, red X is appearing. That's how you know you have the right um, action. Okay, I think we're ready to try this out. We'll close the block editor, save the changes. Copy one down here just in case we break the block. So it works. Graphically, you can see that the, the hatch goes weird on us. So I'm going to edit this again. I'm going to go to right click, modify selection set. It's going to ask me for that um, boundary again. I have an option down at the command line, remove. 
and I select the hatches. And I do the same with the other one. Well, I'll show you a trick. You know how when you do action selection set modify? If you actually click this, those two nodes appear so you can get that exact same window you had before. So I'm going to go action selection set, modify selection set. I can select there and there. It doesn't help in this case, but if you have a more compl complex window, it could um, be of assistance. So you're going to go to remove again, take these out of here. Close the block editor, save the changes. So at least when we move it, the hatch looks less worse, let's say. Let's go in here again. Remember you can't see these, so I don't know why I'm playing around with it right now. And I type at, we're gonna make an attribute. I'll use my medium sized text. You can make your attributes annotative, but um, I don't quite have time to show you what that does in this tutorial, but for me, I'm just gonna make it not annotative. Justification, let's just do center. I wanna, I always do in preset. Lock position, that's actually important. Tag cannot be empty. Just name it tag. I do the preset because just when you insert When you insert the block, um, I don't like when that um, attribute editor window comes up. So it's just quicker for me to insert the block and then change the attributes after if I have to. And then the other thing is um, with my blocks, I use auto lisp routines to insert them. So that's the other reason I like it. Um, like it to be preset. Okay, so remember that our parameter set came with a linear stretch pair, but you're not confined to that, you can add more actions to it. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do another stretch action. This, this is gonna go here. I'm gonna go like this and only select this. So you can actually click on your actions. And this is one of the last things I ever discovered with dynamic blocks. If you click on it, all its properties will come up. What we're going to do is the distance multiplier 2.5. Same thing, but select this side. We'll select it. Distance multiplier 0.5. Okay, I think we're good to go. Close the block editor save the changes. Now this next step, be a bit careful with it. I'm gonna go, because that attribute isn't there yet, but if you go at sync, just enter for the default option, select. Just be careful with that because sometimes it, if you have important information in a block somewhere else in the drawing file, sometimes doing that can change or delete it. So hopefully that'll move halfway with our stretch. So that brings me to the end of everything I wanted to show you in this video. Now normally on my channel I'm not really chasing views or likes or anything like that, but this, this is an exception where if this video does prove to be popular, I might go ahead and make an actual tutorial series, very similar to my Autolus tutorial series. Um, but a dynamic block tutorial series. It would have a nice progression to it, um, start off easy and get harder and harder and basically reach a point where you make the more, some of the more complex dynamic blocks that I've um, created over the years. But yeah, if you did find this useful, um, definitely leave a like, 
leave a comment, but if not, uh, don't fret, because if it's not popular, then I won't go ahead and make that series. I'll save myself a bit of time. So anyways, with all that out of the way, I just want to say thanks very much for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.